Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Sullivan. I am the RVP of Conducive Technologies. Uh, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar on how to boost VM performance with ease. Uh, and I'm very privileged and honored to have uh, Gary Kwan, otherwise known as GQ, our Senior Vice President of Technology Strategy, joining us today uh, to help with the presentation and the webinar. GQ, are you out there? Hi, Dan, I am, and I'm uh, glad to be here. And don't let Dan fool you. He's very technical, more than he'd like to say, but uh, I'm here for any of the deep dive questions, which reminds me, Dan, we like to make these uh, sessions very interactive. So if you have any questions uh, during the sessions or at the end, there's a Q&A box over on the right-hand side, and just uh, address it to all presenters and uh, put in your questions and we'll try to answer them either during the sessions or at the very end and we love to have, uh, make it very interactive so thanks Dan hey GQ thanks very much um, and as you can tell already folks uh, GQ keeps me honest uh, in any conversation here so appreciate <laughs> that GQ um, in addition for attending today's webinar um, we'll cover this at the end uh, you will be receiving a uh, no charge, uh, not for resale, NFR copy of our Velocity software, a $525 value. So uh, we look forward to uh, delivering that to you after the webinar is over. So, folks, uh, with that, just one slide on who we are. Uh, you may know us from a previous life. Uh, we used to be the Disc Keeper Corporation, been in business 38 years. Uh, all focus on optimizing and improving uh, uh, performance in a Windows environment. But in 2012, we rebranded the company uh, to be conducive technology because we no longer defrag a SAN or an SSD. And because of that, GQ and his team of engineers totally respun our software to where we're now two light filter drivers that sit in the Windows OS. Uh, and we'll talk about what it is they do, but very quickly, one tells Windows, don't break up writes into small fragments, keep them large and contiguous. The second is a very intelligent uh, patented caching engine that actually looks for those reads that are performance robbing and automatically puts them into DRAM 10 to 15 times faster. In doing those two things, uh, our software generally reduces 30% of I.O. to back-end storage in virtualized environments, and we have customers seeing performance improvements anywhere from 50 to 300% on existing hardware after installing our software, folks, even in an all-flash environment. And because of those results, Gartner named us a cool vendor and said we should be installed in every virtualized initiative. I spoke about the patented caching engine that GQ and his team put together. It's actually OEM by the folks you see here, HP, Lenovo, Western Digital. Actually, nine of the top, 10 top OEMs put this very intelligent caching engine into their workbooks and laptops because it's a lot better and more efficient than what they themselves have developed. So appreciate that. GQ and his team developed a caching engine that's better than HP can develop. Pretty impressive. Because of all the, the 30 plus years we spent optimizing Windows environments, we're a close partner with Microsoft. Because of what we do to improve performance and reduce I.O. and increase throughput in virtualized environments, we're a close partner with VMware. And we also just recently certified under a new certification that Microsoft came out with, the Microsoft SQL Server I.O. Reliability Certification. GQ, since you were the spearhead here, you want to talk briefly about that? Sure, Dan. You know, Microsoft has certain certifications to make sure that third-party products are fully compatible with theirs, in this case, SQL Server. Now, SQL Server is a uh, little sweet spot for us because it's so I.O. intensive. So we had to pass these stringent tests and then go against a board of uh, Microsoft SQL Server experts, and uh, I'd like to say that this was a nice elite certification that we got and we're the only software vendor to get this certification but we're in good company with people like emc dell and hp so thanks on that dan 
Well, again, congratulations, GQ. So, so folks, been around a long time, sold over 100 million copies of our software worldwide. Uh, very excited to be talking today about how to improve performance in a virtualized world. You know, we've done a lot of surveys of IT professionals uh, over the years. Our latest survey out of 20, and just recently completed in 2019, this is a little word map that it kind of answers that question you see below that what are your toughest applications to support from a performance standpoint. 60% of the organizations we surveyed over a thousand IT professionals said they have performance issues in their virtualized environment. So thank goodness, you know, we're on the scene. But why is that? What happens to IO in a virtualized environment? Well, while virtualization has been great for server efficiency, and I'm sure you all realize that, it has been horrendous for IO performance. What you're seeing here is the most efficient IO environment possible. Large contiguous writes coming out of the Windows OS, moving down through the hypervisor, down to storage, and back again most efficient IO environment possible. But here's what happens as soon as you virtualize. These two inefficiencies enter in the picture and they enter into every single virtualized initiative in the world. The Windows IO tax and the IO blender effect. And GQ, you want to talk about those two inefficiencies? Sure, Dan. And the first one, the Windows IO tax, it's actually caused by the file system in Windows. Now this is on the client systems running Windows all on the logical side. And the reason why this occurs is that whenever a file gets created or extended, Windows or the file system doesn't know how big it's going to be. So what it does is it just looks for the next allocation. And if it doesn't fit that allocation, it has to find another allocation to, to put it in and so forth and so forth. Well, each of those extra allocation is another I.O. or basically another fragment. So therefore, you're seeing all these small random I.O.s coming down. And then when it gets to the hypervisor, rather than having to deal with the smaller number I.O.s, it has to deal with all these numerous small random I.O.s, and you get that I.O. blender effect. Now, there's a lot of overhead just trying to handle this uh, extreme number of IOs, but also you're also not getting the optimal performance out of your storage. If you ever, whenever you buy storage, they give you two benchmarks one for random IO and one for sequential IO. You'll notice that the sequential IO always outperforms the random IO. So if we can enforce those nice sequential IOs, where you can get the best performance out of your storage, and you're going to see it's more efficient. And we'll we'll get to it a little later on how we do that. So thanks, Dan. Great, GQ. Thanks. Thanks very much for that explanation. Appreciate it. Um, so, folks, I think you can appreciate here if it if it took if it took a hundred thousand IOs here to write a gigabyte of data, with our solution in place with your environment looking like this, it would only take 50 or 60,000 IOs. So you can just appreciate what that might mean in your environment relative to application performance, improved throughput, and even the ability to add more applications to your existing environment without having to add expensive infrastructure. So pretty impressive. You know, uh, a lot of people do run VMware, uh, and though this the issues in virtualization are true, whether it's VMware, Hyper-V, Acropolis, or any of the other virtualized uh, environments. But I just want to pull this out of the vSphere Monitoring and Performance Guide around best practices. How do you improve disk I.O. performance? And there are two ways to do it according to VMware. One is to increase the virtual machine memory. Okay, well, that's pretty obvious. But here's the second. You defrag the file system on all guests. Well, we already talked about you no longer defrag a SAN or an SSD, and we are the only software in the Windows OS preventing fragmentation from occurring. So by default, VMware is saying to improve disk I.O. performance, besides adding memory, you should really add conducive software. Just as Gartner said, 
we should be installed in every virtualized initiative. So, where hey, do can, we can I just add something here? You know, sure and this goes clear. with one of our customers, Christus Health. Uh, they were they virtualized their systems, and they virtualized over 2,000 their systems. And they, you know, they did their testing. They did, uh, you know, they virtualized a small group of them, and they saw that everything was running fine. But then when they virtualized over 2,000 of their systems, everything did not run fine. Everything was still working, but everything was much slower. And they always thought, hey, we'll get the same performance as we did with the physical systems. Well, they didn't. And what they found out was it wasn't memory, it wasn't CPU, it was I.O. bottlenecks. And their first reaction was, we're going to upgrade our uh, storage and to help handle this. But before they did that, they tried our software. And we, uh, I think you'll, you'll show later, I think we saved them a couple million dollars on new we, storage. <laughs> we, sure, we, sure did, we, we sure did, GQ. So that, and thanks for bringing that up. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. So, folks, where do we sit? So we're the little orange band here again. We're two light filter drivers. You won't even see us on Task Manager. Sitting in the Windows OS, we're like a personal trainer to Windows. We're not doing the work. But we're telling Windows, don't break up those rights into small fragments. Keep them large and secure. And then that patented caching engine looks to take all of those performance robbing read IOs automatically puts them into DRAM. Hey Dan, this is Don. I think you need to move a little closer to your phone. Your I think that might be GQ, Don. Okay. So, uh, so putting the uh, filter, the DRAM caching engine automatically puts those performance robbing read IOs into DRAM 10 to 15 times faster than Flash. A very simple, very easy, everything's automated. And if it's compatible with Windows, as you can see here, it's compatible with us. No matter what hypervisor is in use, no matter what storage is in use, and no matter what components are in your, in your environment, it's compatible with Windows, it's compatible with us. So again, that's where we sit. Uh, we're in, we install in each of the guest uh, VMs. On a host, we don't install on a VMware host, uh, but in all the guest VMs and so too uh, in all the other uh, virtualized environments. It's always on the guest OS. So again, what is it our software can deliver? Large contiguous writes for more payload with every IO operation. Uh, we'll talk about the caching engine that uses idle DRAM to cache those performance robbing reads. We'll give you an example of what the benefits dashboard looks like that shows you actually what it is we're doing. And folks, you know, if we can't solve your problem, no problem, no hassle, you know, money back, no problem. So GQ, with that, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, the two filter drivers that you are, your team developed? Be glad to, Dan, but let me let me just, there's a couple questions coming in, and I'll just uh, get to those real quick. Uh, the first one is from Angelo, and, and he said, how much does this product modify the hypervisor or vCenter? And actually, we don't modify it at all. We're actually getting installed just on the client VM systems. So, and as Dan indicated where we sit, we're just sitting in the stack on the Windows system. We're agnostic to the type of hypervisor, the type of network storage, the type of network. So basically you think it's still a Windows I.O. coming out of it, but now optimized Windows I.O. So uh, we don't modify it at all. And then Mike, he said, what about new Tan Tanix, AHV, Hyperconverge? Same thing. We are agnostic to that, and we ha we had some good test cases with Nutanix. But go ahead, Dan. No, thanks. I was just going to I was just going to mention that GQ. Um, we've got a number of customers. One of them is one of the largest federal government uh, entities, departments in the federal government that has us in their Nutanix environment, and we've been in there for a while over over almost two years now. And we have reduced billions of IOs in that Nutanix environment. They couldn't be even more happy 
more more happy with us along with their Nutanix environment. So again, remember it's it's the it's the those two inefficiencies that create the I/O bottlenecks that your storage and backend have to deal with, and we're the software that gives you the most efficient I/O for that fast Nutanix HCI to, to process. Thanks, GQ. Any others? Uh, there are, but we'll get into the at uh, later on. I'll, I'll continue on here. Great. Uh, this is great. I love the questions. Uh, I I indicated before how the Windows file system doesn't know how big the file is what is going to be when it's created or extended. So it just gets the next allocation that causes this to uh, the items to break apart. Now what we're doing to prevent this is we're basically in the background. We're mining your system and we know when certain applications or certain file types, when they get created or extended, how big they're going to be. And all we're doing is we're feeding that intelligence back to the Windows file system. And so now when it has to look for the allocation, it can look for the best fit allocation. And what this means is rather than, as this picture, rather than multiple small random IOs to solve a write, it's just a nice sequential IO. An analogy I like to give here is, you know, if you're going to carry a gallon of water from one place to another, do you do it with 100 Dixie cups or just one big gallon uh, bucket and get it done all at one time? And that's what we're doing. Of course, being able to write it all in a nice sequential I.O., you can also read it back in a nice sequential I.O. So thanks yeah. on that, Dan. Sure, GQ. And how about a little bit more background on what IntelliMemory does for folks? Uh, be glad to. And, you know, we're – we're very unique in our caching, and that's why Dan indicated why uh, the top 10 PC OEM manufacturers license us. Uh, the first thing is how we use memory. You don't have to go and allocate memory for our caching. We're just going to use what's available on your system, available memory that's not being used. And of course, if any user or system process comes in and needs it, we automatically give it up so there's never any memory contention issue. Then the second part is how we determine what to put and keep in cache for the best performance. I mean, many caching products, it's kind of like first in, let me, you know, this data was just read, let me put that in there and hope it gets read again. Uh, we're very unique in that we're going to monitor your system in the background and determine what data is getting hit the most. And that's one factor. The other factor is what data is going to give you the best performance gains. Because we may not have much memory to work with, so we're going to take advantage of what we can first and put in the cache data that we know is going to give you the best performance gains. For example, we know it's those small busy IOs that is hurting performance, not the larger IOs. So we factor that in to give the big performance gains. And what we do is, as, as indicated, we're sitting right there at the VM where the application is creating the IO. And if we can satisfy that IO, well, we just prevent that IO from having to go down the network to the network storage to get satisfied. So not only did we increase the latency or actually decrease the latency of that IO getting satisfied. We just increased the bandwidth of your uh, network to the storage so other people could use it. Now you have to remember, and you know, some network storage, they have caching itself, but it still has to go down there to get cached. And then of course, uh, us using the memory there on the virtual machines, that's 10 to 15 times faster than the SSD down at the network storage. Uh, Dan, and you know, I'll go to one more question from Angelo uh, asking, does this have to be installed on all clients or can it be selective? And Angelo, it, it does not have, it's not required to be put on all clients. You can just be selective. But we do recommend that you try to put on all clients on a host because even though you're decreasing 
or optimizing one system, that other system is still causing traffic on that uh, network stored. So I'd like to get get it improved all around. And, you know, Dan, I, I, I gave a lot of data there, but I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Oh, great. No, thanks, GQ. Appreciate it. And, folks, everything GQ just talked about is all done automatically. There is nothing for you to do to have this optimization occur and those noisy reads to be put into DRAM 10 to 15 times faster than Flash. You know, we trademarked the set it and forget it moniker years ago. So we beat the Ronco chicken guy to that because there, it really is set it and forget it software. And people would ask, well, you know, GQ, you know, the software is working great and applications are running fast. You know, but uh, you know, I can't, what's going on? Well, GQ and his team responded by putting together what you see as a performance dashboard to actually show you, and you'll be able to see this when you install the, the uh, not for resale copy that you're gonna get at the end here, what's happening in your environment. GQ, you wanna talk a little bit about what you're showing folks here? Sure, Dan, you know, uh... We're trying to show you the benefits of what this product's doing for you. So, first of all, we'll show you how many IOs we're getting eliminated and then break it down from read and write. Now, when I say eliminated, it's eliminating it having go to storage to get satisfied. For instance, read IOs, we cache it right there, so we eliminate that from having to go to storage. The write IOs, rather than a thousand. IOs to satisfy a write, we do it in two. So we're limiting that from going to storage. But that, what does that really save you? Well, we being a filter driver there, we know the, the latency times are going to be there. So by limiting those IOs, we show you how much IO time is being saved there. And that, that's a basis of it right there, Dan. Uh, the yep. Absolutely, GQ. And folks, we have customers, uh, well, you'll see probably later on that, that have billions of IOs being eliminated in their environment, and then multiple days of IO processing time being saved uh, because of that IO elimination. Here's just an example uh, of one customer. Uh, it's University of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana, 50,000 students. We're in their facilities and services group. They were a disk keeper customer. In the past, they virtualized. Uh, they brought in all new hardware, build big Dell 730 servers, 768 gigabytes of RAM, and an all brand new flash compellent back end. Uh, and they manage all of the work orders in the university. Um, they have their own power plant. They build all the furniture for the classrooms. And this, app and this application monitors those work orders and also all the card swipes of the 50,000 students and faculty in the bookstore, the dormitories, and the food halls. So they said, well, you know, we'll, uh, we'll run, we'll try your software. So we said, great. This is the results of a 72-hour before and after benchmark uh, with our software. And the top row is before Velocity was installed. And this Oracle database running this, these specific jobs generated 13.9 million IOs to disk and took four hours to run. They're happy as clams because it's running a lot faster than it used to on that old hardware. But folks, look at, look at the bottom line. 72 hours later after installing Velocity, and oh, by the way, we didn't mention it, Velocity now installs without a reboot in your environment takes only minutes to install. They installed it, and look at this, 13.9 million IOs down to 2.7 million IOs. Runtime, four hours to an hour and 15 minutes, and that's on that all flash, brand new flash array. And look between the two, we actually processed another half a terabyte of data in the hour and 15 minutes. They were just blown away because they didn't expect that. Um, and as I said to Greg Landis, the IT director, gee, Greg, isn't this great? You know, we can sweat these assets longer now for you. You can. And he kind of looked at me and he said, yeah, yeah, I can do that, Dan, I guess. But what you have really allowed me to do here is you've allowed me to add more applications and grow the applications I have on this existing infrastructure I just bought. I don't have any more money. I spent all my budget. 
but you've given me the headroom to grow and to add more applications to this environment, and that's what's important to me. I said, you know, fantastic. Thanks for teaching me, Greg. I appreciate it. So that was the University of Illinois. We've got multiple examples across our website, and I'm not going to go through all of these with you. GQ upper left mentioned Christus Health. They were able to postpone a $2 million storage upgrade just by installing our software. Just staggering. And as he, GQ mentioned, we are on 2,700 servers in their environment today. Bottom left, Bell Mobility, the Verizon of Canada. Look at those numbers. We reduced IO to SAN by 61% for 3x faster SQL queries. Folks, I, you know, just by installing our software, no reboot required. Starts optimizing in minutes. Pretty amazing. ASL marketing in the middle. SQL batch imports, a 15-hour reduction. And you can read the others. Just really stunning what these results are. And there are even more. I mentioned the University of Illinois. You can read the other ones here. Again, they're, they're on our website, et cetera. But case after case of folks struggling with poor performance in a virtualized environment, some of them throwing very expensive hardware against it, and may have fixed it even short term, but they start to get problems again. And you saw why way back when in the beginning of the presentation. The I.O. blender effect you know, creates havoc with I.O. in a virtualized environment, and Windows is just breaking up all those writes into small fragments. We will solve the problem for you. So what do we do? How do we get faster VM performance? Well, you, you did hear it from you know, VMware early on, but certainly adding more DRAM is, 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 is possible and beneficial for our caching engine, for getting the VM, because DRAM is 10 to 15 times faster than Flash, and because GQ's patented very intelligent and efficient caching engine looks for, learns your application and looks for those performance robbing read IOs, and that's what it puts into, into, into the DRAM. Another, if you're in a SQL environment, a lot of folks don't cap SQL's max memory, and it'll just take all the memory that it possibly can get. So that's another key element into ensuring you have faster VM performance. And then finally, take a look at the dashboards. And if we're not getting in 50% of IO reduction of storage, and it's a read intensive environment, you know, try adding just a little more memory. GQ, any comments here on the best practices? No, Dan, I think you covered it all. Just I'll reiterate that if you ever put it on a SQL server, SQL is not very efficient or smart on how it uses memory. It's just going to try to load all its databases into all the memory it can, leaving none for anybody else. So, if in those cases, and we can refer to the uh, knowledge base articles from Microsoft on how to limit SQL, just give us a little bit of that. And I, we had some tests uh, done by Outside Lab, and we we saw an increase of over 60% transaction rates just by giving us a little bit of memory. So I think you got the rest of it, Dan. Thanks. No, I tell you, GQ. Is on the one hand, folks, it's very simple when you think about what it is we're doing. There's a lot that's happening, and it's happening in the background. GQ didn't even talk about another patented uh, engine in the, in the product called Invisitasking, where we use idle CPU time to do our work. If you, met, you may recall I mentioned you're not going to see us really pop up on Task Manager because of Invisitasking. So it's just stunning what GQ and his team have put together for you to improve performance in a virtualized environment. So folks, next steps. As I mentioned, for hanging with us here for 30 minutes, um, you're going to receive um, a full single license copy of Velocity. Just download it. You know what? You watch. It's going to take you longer to download than it will to install in the OS. A couple mouse clicks after it's installed and you're off and running. And let the, let the software learn the application uh, and then take a look at the dashboard after, you know, a few days to see what's going on.
and we're happy to work with you. Uh, we have two licensing models. One is a per VM license. The other is a host-based license. And a little bit of a misnomer, we don't install on the host, we install on all the VMs, and that's the best practice on the host. And so a host license covers all the VMs on a host. Maybe you have 10, 15, 20 on a host, that license covers all of them. So, uh, and we're happy to, to work with you to give you a host license to use and to try so, so that as GQ mentioned, the best practice is to optimize every all VMs on the host because you get, as GQ explained, what's called the noisy neighbor effect. So you have 10 VMs, you, you put us on five, well, you got five that are really chatty, creating all that random, tiny, noisy IO, and they take away from the optimization that you provided the other five VMs. So again, take some minutes to just optimize, optimize those, and you're off and running. So GQ, you know, you, you mentioned that there may be, I don't know if there are more questions that came in after the ones you picked up. I did, Dan. Uh, you know, let me let me go over a few more of these questions here. Great. And thanks for those uh, still hanging with us. Uh, the first one is uh, someone asked about the safety of the cache. I mean, are you doing write caching for the uh, to optimize the writes? Uh, and no, we're not. As I indicated before, we're just feeding intelligence back to the file system so it can do a better job of of finding the best fit allocation to enforce nice sequential write IOs. Our caching is just a read caching. And what that means is that the data that is in our cache is already on your storage. So what happens if the system gets knocked down by power? Well, yes, it's in our cache, but it's already down in your storage already. So there's no, Data integrity was one of our top goals, and we want to make sure that is in, and it is with the way we're doing it. Now, another person asks, <laughs> and we, you know, Dan, you mentioned it doesn't require a reboot on install. Someone asked, does it require a reboot on uninstall? And no, it does not. So, uh, and you, and a lot of people may think, oh, well, applications they they shouldn't need a reboot. Well. Since we're a storage driver, uh, we had to figure out how to be able to do this without uh, a reboot, and we have here. Very unique. GQ, I got it. you're right. I mean, it is amazing, folks. Um, you know, GQ mentioned Christus Health. So Christus Health upgrades 2,700 VMs, you know, in a flash, no pun intended just because of the no reboot feature that GQ and his team brought out. I had a customer last week, GQ, tell me they have to reboot to install a print driver. So, I mean, it is it is so easy, folks, to use our install and fire software. Sorry, GQ. Oh, no problem, Dan. I got some questions for you. And Angela asks, is this uh, NFR good for only one guest? Yeah, and you can put it on uh, multiple guests. Angelo. Okay. Then Jack says, since it sits on the guest, is it licensed per guest? So go ahead. Okay. okay. So as I mentioned, uh, so this license is a quote unquote per server license. So yes, this would be licensed on a per VM basis. I also mentioned there is that host quote unquote host based license that uh, that licenses or gives you license to license all the VMs on a host. The break-even point is seven VMs. Seven or less on a host, the per server license is more cost effective. Seven or more, the host license is the way to go. But again, the best practice is to put us on all the VMs on a host to eliminate that noisy neighbor effect. Thanks, Dan. Uh, another question from Angelo about the, the dashboard reports. Asked if they're viewable from vCenter or hypervisor. Uh, actually, right now they are not. They're visible through the 
uh, UI of the product, the velocity UI. But we also have what we call the velocity management console. And from here, this management console, you can manage multiple deployments of velocity. And not only just manage it, you can, uh, of course, deploy it from that single pane of glass. And from there, you can get a report from all the different deployments. So you can get, get a report on X machines all on one report there. Okay, and then let's see here. I think, let me just check here, Dan. Oh, and then uh, William asks, can they get a copy of these slides emailed to them? Yeah, absolutely. Sure, we'll get we'll uh, we'll we'll PDF these up and send them out to everybody that's on the WebEx today. Absolutely. Okay. Dan, I think that's it. And you know, uh, as Angela just said, I will have to wait and play with it. And that's all for, from the tech side. You know, I'm not the salesperson on the tech side. I just enjoy watching people get this product installed and see the gains that they can get from their from their systems there. And that's it for me, Dan. Well, you know what, GQ, I'm the same as you. Uh, okay. there's, there's nothing better than, and, and I understand for sure that people, you know, want to test it first and make sure it doesn't break anything in their environment. And can you really do this without a reboot? And then does it really work? And et cetera, et cetera. So that's why, A, we're giving you a free copy for attending the webinar, but B, we're happy to work with each and every one of you uh, to expand, you know, the testing environment uh, to, you know, it, to, to just demonstrate the power of the software across, you know, a multiple uh, hosted, multiple VM environment. So, folks, thanks for your questions. They were great. Good interaction. Um, appreciate it. Again, look forward to uh, in your email to get a co NFR copy of the, of the software and along with the presentation coming along. And, and please reach back to us with any questions, comments, whatever you may have. No question is a bad one. So GQ, thanks for taking the time today to, to join me in this how to improve performance in a virtualized world. I hope we you know, enlighten some folks as to what it is our uh, patented software does. And folks, we look forward to working with you all. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Thanks, everyone.